an opportunity to talk about whenever we have an opportunity to talk about uh, entrepreneurship and startups in Saudi Arabia, it's something very, very uh, dear to me, uh, very important for me because it is, it's a very exciting area, the whole area of entrepreneurship and starting your own thing. So when, when, I was, when I was requested to talk about this, I was very, very happy, very excited to share uh, experiences and hopefully to, you know, to uh, shed some light on the subject which is one of the subjects in the last five years uh, has become very, very important for the country. Uh, so building a company, starting your own business, it's one of the pillars of South Division 2030. So it's a blessing, alhamdulillah, that you and I are able to talk about something that is so important for our kingdom. So it's always a pleasure, alhamdulillah, to be able to uh, participate in something uh, that is enjoyable, that is very exciting, very challenging. It is one of the most challenging things that you will do to start your own company. At the same time, it is a very rewarding thing to do. Uh, and to me, uh, there's nothing else that compares to starting your own thing or helping somebody else start your own thing. It's, it's very, very exciting. So I really appreciate the opportunity uh, because, as I mentioned, it's, it's very important for the country. And I'm talking to um, the brightest minds in Saudi Arabia, if not the world. And I'm not just saying that because you're my students. I'm saying that because I've taught for 20 years. Alhamdulillah. Uh, 20 years uh, teaching this whole area of entrepreneurship and startups at KVPM, I can guarantee you, because I have many examples that I'll share them with you in this, class, in this uh, presentation, that you are amongst the brightest minds, some of the hardest working people to build anything that you want to build. And that's the reason why, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, um, I think the next, these 10 years leading to 2030 uh, are going to be some of the best years ahead for all of us because the kingdom needs you to build innovative, new, uh, modern needed innovations in technology, in retail, in energy, in pretty much any industry you look at you can build very fascinating tools today. And Alhamdulillah, with the technologies that we have available to us, you literally just need a laptop and you could build the next Facebook, Google, anything. So yeah. this is why it's just, it's very, very rewarding, very, very exciting. And I hope to share with you today um, on how to go about you know, last session that you had was you know, how, to, how to validate your idea. Okay. This is very, very important because, and I'll share some slides with you shortly. Uh, I'll try to make it interactive. I know it's night. You don't want to see me lecture. You don't want to hear a lecture at night. So I'll try to make it as interactive as possible and oh, be able wow. to share with you some, some, some points that you should consider if you're looking at you know, starting or building your own venture. Like I mentioned, it's very exciting. It's very, very rewarding. Uh, and to me, you know, alhamdulillah, I've been, I've been very fortunate to be able to do this when I was in college. So when I was a college student like yourselves, mashallah, quite a few years ago, um, I paid for my college education through my own ventures. This is in the 90s, so I think many of you were not born then, um, so I'm showing you my age now, which is cool, it's fine. Um, so I started having an e-commerce site and you know, building, and, I, and I, just, I just got hooked to it. It's just something uh, very, very important to me, and I just, I just found that this is my true calling in terms of building something that you're doing, uh, something that you love, you're passionate about. And Alhamdulillah, I've been very lucky that 
since college, I've always done something that I've been very passionate about. And may Allah SWT also give all my students, all my friends, uh, the kind of work that they're passionate about, uh, that they enjoy doing. That way, Alhamdulillah, you will never feel like you're working. You get up and you just, you know, you go because you're passionate about going somewhere. And it happens to be work, but to you, it doesn't seem like work because you enjoy the challenges and such. So I will go ahead and uh, uh, if you allow me to share my screen, I will go ahead and uh, Let me give you a co-host. start up a few slides, inshallah. Okay. Uh, before you start, can I ask a small question? Uh, don't you think that now it's a bubble or it's a trend that everyone wants to be an entrepreneur? I would say um, the thing is, you know, it, the market is, it's so massive. The requirements are so big. If you take a look at uh, just, for example, how much opportunity there is just in this year, in 2020. So now, alhamdulillah, you know, as you know, we are looking at a uh, couple of, this is our second semester going online. You know? So this year, more than ever, the requirement for having, um, forget the startup side of it, just having a digital business, a digital strategy, is so important because without it, you may not exist. Without it, you may, your business may not be able to function. So just because of that, you have so many opportunities in business, so to say. So for example, let's take e-commerce. Right? I'm sure I have many of my students that have uh, taken an e-commerce class with me or registered. E-commerce has, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, KFUPM uh, Business School, CIM back then in 2000, was the first university to offer e-commerce back in 2000. You know, and our students, Alhamdulillah, I think many of my students would know, Extra website, Jadid website, Zuhud al website, were all initiated by our students. So our students, mashallah, tawarakallah, are doing some of the very profound, very impactful work in e-commerce. And the need for e-commerce is at an all-time high. Even in more mature markets, such as the United States and the UK, e-commerce has grown just this year by, you know, by five years. It has gone forward by five years. So looking at our market, the, the need is, has always been there and now we're just into that space. So definitely it's, it's I wouldn't say it's a bubble, but I, say, I would say that it's very popular. And for all the right reasons, I think because there is so much demand for innovation. And also in 2020 onwards, we're looking at, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, there are so many technologies available to us that uh, very innovative technologies. So the technologies that keep us connected and engaged onto certain sites and apps uh, is because they're using, I don't want to say very advanced technology, but they're just using very engaging technology in artificial intelligence, data analytics. These are things that you have heard about in many classes, but really it makes a user just keep connected. Why is it that we are you know, we go to bed at 11 o'clock, but by the time we go to sleep, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's late. It's because we're in, engaged in our phones. And you've heard about, you know, you've heard this when I say it in class, so what's the first thing that you do when you get up? You grab your phone. We're always engaged. So AI, uh, data analytics, being able to analyze what customers want, it's, it makes our lives so much easier. So it's a fantastic time ahead. Fantastic in terms of building something that is there's a major major need for, and I think it's just uh, yeah, uh, really really uh, good time as we move forward into this into this uh, area for electronic commerce and digital, and uh, yeah, so this will be this will be I think a very very interesting time uh, up to up to the next you know, up to twenty thirty. So this is a, this is a, um, can everybody see the screen, the presentation, yeah? I will leave the floor for you now, uh, so you can sure, take. Sure, sure. Very cool. 
So can everyone see the actual uh, presentation? Yeah, I think it's clear. Yeah, okay, cool, very good. So, um, so this presentation, I have shared this with uh, the community a few times based on building a startup and formalizing your ideas. Everything is about just planning and forming what you're going to do next. So this, this sort of presentation is just talking about your idea, how to take your idea and how to launch a business uh, in South Arabia. So it's a, it's a super exciting time. Uh, because all the ecosystem for the startup in terms of if you need funding, funding is available. If you need to build a team, which is the most important part for your startup, you are, alhamdulillah, at the best place to build a team. And I can share with you some examples uh, of KFUPM companies that are just doing fantastic business and they're building very sustainable, very impactful technologies that are extremely global. So I'll show you this example, Sean. So this is basically a presentation outline, you know, starting a digital business in Saudi Arabia. Some of you may know I'm just a little bit, you know, a uh, little bit biased towards digital because it's a very low hanging fruit. There's so much potential, but really you could, you could apply this to a restaurant or a coffee shop. If you wanted to build one, it's all doable, but it's just that um, I have a, you know, very fond, uh, experience with digital and I think it's just something that you should you could also be interested in looking at so here's what I'm looking at today we look at the state of Saudi Arabia digital 2020 then we'll concentrate on the business model canvas the business model canvas is a fantastic reference tool to go by and I'll, I'll talk about that and then how do you go about actually going ahead and building your startup and how do you build the next Facebook or the next Kareem? Well, there are some, there are some very, very basic DNAs that all these companies have. And it makes perfect sense. And I'll, I'll share that with you in the presentation. So the business model campus. So last time, you know, you, you have attended this, this uh, series of lectures on, you know, getting your ideas, getting your ideas built, getting your business established, you know, how do you go about, you know, validating your idea? You know? And this is a continuation. So it's a, it's a cycle of continuous building, continuous improvement, making sure that you're building something people want. You know? And this, this is a, uh, it's such an important area to look at, to build something that people want. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll reference it a few times. So the business model campus, it's, I would say, about a 10 year old, 12 year old tool. When I was starting a business back in the 90s, everything was very traditional, right? You write a business plan and that business plan gets written in maybe two or three months, right? And you have a five year summary on how sales will be for five years from now how costing will be. What will you do in year number three? It was good at that time because investors, they want you to write this plan, that they want you to actually build a plan. It looks really good, right? You have this document, maybe 200 page document. It looks very solid. It's really good. However, as you know, in business, especially in a digital business world, things are extremely dynamic. Things change overnight. And so this reference point, this nine point reference area, which is called the business model campus, has been very, very popular around the world. And people have built extremely successful companies just by looking at this. Now, let me just say the business plan that people used to write like 10, 15 years ago, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with you sitting down with your partner and making a five-year projection, estimating the costs, and how and where should we have an office, and where's a, nothing wrong with that. That's a great exercise. But what is more important than the plan itself, than those 
What is more important than the 200 pages that you write is the actual task and exercise of you and your partner sitting down, sharing ideas, communicating. This is this is fantastic part of it. What you make out of it, what you write, I would say today is a lot more interactive, a lot more dynamic, and this is where the BMC, the business model canvas comes in. It is very similar to, when I say it's very similar, you cover the same areas that you looked at in the business plan, but now it is something you visit this every month. It's a reference point. And it allows you to think about the most important things in your business and taking a look at, for example, what is your value proposition? So the value proposition is, you know, what value do we deliver to the customer? What is it about your app, your technology, your site that makes someone download your app or if, it, if, it, if it's an app, you download the app. And what, what is it that makes the person drag it to the home page, drag it to the home screen? That's your value proposition. What are you doing? You know, what is the problem that you're solving um, for your customers? If you can address this, if you, can, you know, if you're, if you have that problem solved, that's going to be very, very important. So your value proposition, what does it do for your customers? Very, very important to you know, to look at that. And that's what the business model canvas does. It helps you, you know, articulate in your mind, what is it that you're doing? What is the problem that you're solving? At the same time, if you don't have this down, nothing else matters. And I'll, I'll come back to this point quite a few times tonight, Sharma. So value proposition is, what do we deliver to the customer? What are the key activities that we must do as a team, as a company, to make sure our value propositions are met so that we can provide a value proposition or the key activities that we must do involves sales, involves many, many different things. Even though sales can fix up a lot of things, but it's not always about money. It's all, it's a number of different factors as long as at the end of the day, you're solving a problem that a customer has and in your solution of that problem, you have systemized it, you have worked it out so that you can make money from that. That's basically what your business is going to be. Solving a problem and you know, making a living from that. And it, it should be a repeatable solution that you're able to do. You should be able to repeat this sale and this, you know, and this um, solution that you're providing. It should not be a one-time chance. It should not be by luck, it should be systemized. Right? It should be a repeatable uh, business, very, very important. Key activities, who are the key partners? Partners are very important. They're extremely important. Though. Doing something on your own and trying to do it yourself, it's, it's very, very challenging. Take a look at, for example, a company called Zappos. Zappos is a company now acquired by Amazon. They, they, they celebrate their partners. So they have once a year, they have this, they have this event, and they invite all their key partners to come and spend a weekend with them. They don't get any work done, but it's just a way of celebrating that relationship. And it has a very, very huge impact. Now, for example, you have uh, the latest iPhone, or the latest MacBook, whatever it is being released by Apple or whoever. How will Apple decide that, you know, company A, maybe Jerry or Extra or Noon or Soup, everybody wants them. How will they decide who gets what? Right? So again, managing that relationship between partners and making sure that you know you are just manage your relationship. It's very, very important. Identify who they are, who are the key suppliers, and you know uh, what key resources are you acquiring from these partners. All of this has to be written down. You can't keep stuff in your minds. Right? As a as a single founder, if you do it, it's fine. But once you have employee number one or employee number two or a co-founder, everything has to be written down so that you are now transparent and open with everybody so that everybody needs to be on the same page, which is very, very, very crucial. Right, so communication is, is paramount when it comes to a startup. It's the most important thing because you're a small organization, just maybe you and your co-founder, but you have a to-do list of 
many, many things. So you must communicate extremely, extremely well. Uh, what key resources do our value proposition require? Right? So everything goes back to your value prop, value proposition in terms of what we must deliver and everything else that must take place in a systemized way, not by chance and not just because, no, it has to be worked out, has to be planned for, and you are ahead of the game. Right? And this is what you want to compete with your, you know, with, where we're competing with about, right? planning, organizing, making sure that you are addressing that problem, make sure that problem is there. Maybe that problem is no longer there, maybe. Right? So you want to make sure uh, you have these things. So, you know, customer relationship, right? So every, you have, a, you have a customer, how do you manage that relationship? What type of relationship each customer segment expects? So you may have a different variety of customers. You may have customers that are very demanding because you're providing, a, you know, you're providing something to them that competes with their WhatsApp, for example. So they're, they'll be very demanding in terms of what it does. So how do you build, how do you maintain that relationship is very, very important. The channels that you can use, it may be a digital channel, it may be through your website, it may be through iOS store, Apple or Android, store. it may be through you know, any electronic means or such. Uh, how do you use your QR code? It's all part of the marketing and making sure that you identify your customers and you know how to get to them, make sure the channels are open, are clear, and very important that your entire team knows about this. So communication should be, should be very, very well laid out and so that everyone is uh, you know, able to uh, work on the same thing. And so in a startup, uh, you know, working together is, is one of the most important things because you have a lot of things to do. No one can afford to you know, move in a different direction. Everybody works the same direction. But that direction has to be clearly set up so that everybody is familiar with what's happening in terms of that. And uh, so the customer segments that you have, uh, what are the customer segments, you know, who they are? Is this a mass market? Is this a niche market? So all of these you need to understand. Uh, spend understanding time in research. All of these things becomes really, really important. Uh, nothing is more important than you know, your customer base, understanding that and making sure the customer needs are still there. So this year, right, I mean, what everybody has gone through, and especially my students and everyone, you know, may Allah make it easy for everyone. I mean, because it's been a very challenging year. The kind of the kind of customers, what they're buying, customer buying habits and behaviors are changing. Uh, maybe people are not buying as many expensive laptop bags as before uh, because they realize, you know, they're working from home. Right? So maybe more comfortable jeans or sneakers. So customer behaviors are changing right? uh, because so you have to make sure you are ahead of that to so make sure you provide what the customer is in need of and help them and help them discover what, you know, what they're what they So this is basically, you know, in terms of customers, the cost, right? Understanding the cost. And one of the things for a startup is you want to minimize your cost as much as possible. So before you do that, you have to understand uh, what are the most important costs inherent to our business model, what are the key resources? Are they very expensive? Which key activities are most expensive? And maybe something that you can adjust, maybe include that later on. All of those things matter. So your fixed costs, salaries, rent, utilities. One of the things that I was talking to an entrepreneur about, and he was looking to hire someone, and you know, so he decided to hire someone uh, remotely. And he says it's fantastic. Yeah, now he hired someone uh, from another city in Saudi Arabia, and he said it's great because my, his overhead costs are so much less. Right? So working remotely, you may be able to get a lot of very, very interesting work done. So you have to figure out your costs. What are they? And uh, you know, how you can 
I mean, minimizing it will just help you, you know, uh, get uh, into profitability sooner than before. A lot of companies actually have a chief revenue officer. And I, and I, and I completely agree with that. Why? Because this person is responsible for, for what? For actually generating money. It, it makes perfect sense. So if you're, if you're building a company, someone should be responsible for figuring out revenue sources, right? revenue models. And so CRO, Chief Rev Revenue Officer, is, is something I would definitely keep in the mind for because if you're not focused on generating sales, right, repeatable sales, you may be getting into trouble as you build a company. So allocate to someone, it may not be, you know, may not be a full-time position day one, but everybody in your company should be selling. Um, because you are always going to promote about what you're doing, what you're building, and everybody's you know, is working towards this, this amazing company that you're looking to build, for example. So this is just, you know, revenue streams that you must figure them out, must know what they are, you know, and moving forward. Um, and the next, next set of slides, you know, just, I've covered a few of them already. There's a big demand for tech. There's been a lot of very recent exits, and this has validated the VC model, right? So Kareem, classic example, uh, a very successful exit by people that invested in it. The tech ecosystem and the value chains are developing um, fairly well in Saudi Arabia. Everything's there. So what you need to build your company all your different stakeholders are present, alhamdulillah. So uh, if you need funding, you have multiple venture capitalists available. Uh, you have incubators available. Uh, provides the ease of doing business in Saudi Arabia is, is, is at an all time high you know, to make it a very uh, entrepreneur friendly uh, country. And there's so many, mashallah, uh, changes happening for the, for, the, for the better of the economy, alhamdulillah. So this is just a, you know, just a landscape, a digital landscape, uh, and I'll cover some of the digital areas uh, quickly, and then we'll go into building the company. So digital 2020, you may have seen this in, uh, you know, in the other classes, is just data and stats regarding the state of Saudi Arabia in a, in a digital sense. Right? Um, and I'll quickly go through them, and I'll, I'll give you the reference points. You can download them and consume them in your own time. Very interesting, you know, numbers are here it's as of january 2020 sort of prior to the pandemic so the numbers you could take that into account right? so talks about total population right um mobile phone connections so definitely you have more mobile phones than people right so obviously it means you know many people have you know more than one phone which is very very interesting number of internet users so very high penetration rate for the internet 93 percent of the people population is already online. Very, very interesting. Uh, pretty much 93% have a mobile phone. 93% have a smartphone, right? which is, again, very fantastic if you are going to build a digital company, if you can provide an app for whatever it is. And, uh, because very high engagement is there, uh, high smartphone usage. And, you know, so this is a very digital market a connected market, which is something, you know, it's very interesting, especially for the marketers out there, because you have some, you have a target market that is already connected and uh, probably is more online than they, than they need to be, just by looking at, uh, you know, how much time where people are spending online and on their phones and such. So using the internet, you know, spend time basically about seven hours, you know, uh, this is per day. So this is a pretty high number. Uh, using social media about three hours, watching TV three hours, etc. Uh, you know, so you can see this is a very media-rich digital community that we're looking at. Right? So it's all good for the people that are looking to do some digital marketing. Um, and you know, so you know, digital marketing is at a at a fantastic time because it's where Many companies around the world are spending more of their marketing reals and dollars on digital 
than offline, which is which is very telling. So this has been, you know, and again, pandemic uh, probably has just accelerated this uh, more than ever before. So, you know, adoption of digital innovation, and this is something, you know, especially when it comes to voice activated, right? like Alexa and Siri. So you can actually build a, an app where you can literally talk to your device right? and have a very, you know, it's, it's, not just, it's not just open this and, you know, play this and find, no, no, it's actually having a conversation, right? So you can say, Alexa, find out the last, last, uh, you know, last year's sales report and how is it compared to advertising that we did last year compared to this year? So you could actually have it calculate for you. Kind of like a kind of like a very smart personal assistant. Those kind of technologies, voice activated, very, very important. Um, watching TV content, you know, that's that's uh, at an all-time high. So a lot of digital innovation, smart homes, smart hubs from Apple, Google, etc. These are just getting very, very popular. There's also cryptocurrencies that I think we will, we will hear about more and more as the crypto market and Bitcoin and this area of very digital innovation is becoming more and more, uh, more and more popular. E-commerce use, you know, this is, uh, this is January, so right before things got, you know, things got very interesting earlier this year. So, you know, Many people are searching for products online. You know, 90%, 90% are visiting online uh, stores, purchased product online, 73%. But I think that number is now significantly higher. I know many people that purchase their groceries for the first time online, and now they, haven't, they have not gone back to traditional. So it makes sense, right? If you can provide something conveniently and have the user actually save money and provide the convenience, you know, it's really, really very, very interesting. And this is where opportunities, there are a massive number of opportunities in this space because there's so much demand for logistics, so much demand for online activities, online stores, payments, uh, delivery, online stores, and you know, even on social media. So a lot of, a lot of potential you know, is, is going to be uh, it's going to be had. So I think you know, it's a very good time to actually go ahead and look at what do you need in terms of what is it that you need and then work from there. And for startup, for the ecosystem, it's a, probably one of the best times uh, these days because we have so much demand for this, for this area. Um, so in Digital 2020, basically, these are some of the technologies that you may want to consider if you're looking at building something, right? Because this is what gets you that high engagement. So if you look at providing a FinTech solution, uh, it could be something, you know, cyber security or even crypto uh, enabled, it may be related to, you know, along those lines. If you include artificial intelligence with that, it just become, it does become super engaging now because now you have software that is thinking way better than a programmer can. So basically, it's going to figure things out for the user that gets better with time. Right. So uh, that just becomes really really powerful. And putting it on cloud computing, you know, putting it on the cloud just makes you always have that system available. Right. So there's no there's no downtime there is just be constantly available no matter where you are um, on the internet. Plus, if you have a spike, if you have an increased usage, uh, the cloud handles that for you. And all of this you basically will analyze with, you know, with analytics. So you can find out what is customer's behavior? What is the customer sentiment? What are customers actually thinking right now? And not just, you know, you actually have data to back you up. So if you have a data-driven company that is used, that is using blockchain, that is using AI, I mean, you automatically have you know, just a, uh, you know, a high competitive advantage of building something 
that will be, if done correctly, you know, should be very high uh, engaging in terms of you know, connecting with customers, you know, engaging with customers. So launching a digital product. And before I do that, before I do that, let me just cover a few things you know, when it comes to why startups fail. And ironically, it's very strange. The top, I'll, I'll share with you a few reasons and I'll share with you, you know, the slides so you can have the slides afterwards. The number one reason why startups fail, ironically, is, is basically the things that we've been talking about. So what is that? What do you think is the number one reason why startups fail? Anyone, anyone. What's the number one reason why startups around the world fail at, they may be shut down, they may be pivoting. Okay. I'll tell you the number one reason why startups fail is because there's no market need for their products. So you have, you have a startup founder that is building something and there's no market need for that. The problem here is that you could do everything right. You could build the fanciest app that is super fast, uh, very high engaging, and et cetera, et cetera. But you'll not find many people using it. Right? Again, because there's no market for your product. And ironically, that's 40% of the reasons why startup fail is because of this. So it goes back to why are you doing the startup? Why are you build why are you building a startup? The only reason why you should build a startup is to find a problem that a customer has and you solve that problem. That's the reason to have a startup. Uh, you know, there are the, and this is again reason number one why it fails 42%. 29% 29 ran out of cash, not the right team, get out competed. And you know, and then, of course, these are all very, very valid reasons. But you would expect no market needs for the last one. Because the question is, why are you starting a business where there's no market for it? And this, I think there's many reasons for that. Like, you know, um, I think one of the reasons that I've had, you know, and that I've talked to a lot of startup founders, and they say, you know, they, they want to make it work. Now, that's very scary territory. You want to make it work. I have to make it work. Oh my God, I told my mom, you know, so I told my mom and my dad, they were telling their friends, if I don't make it work, you know, uh, they're going to think of me as a failure. See the problem that you're getting into? It's okay to pivot. It's okay to do something else because you can fix everything about a startup, but if there's no market, there's no market. On the other side, if you have a fantastic market, and you're building a great product, you know, it, it, everything will fix itself because you have a market for your product. So it really, really is, is very, very important. So losing focus, you know, and uh, lack of passion, all these things matter. But the most important thing is, you know, having, having no market need, which is very, very scary, but, you know, should always be careful about this one from the very beginning. And the only way you do that, you basically will go and test your hypothesis right, to make sure that there is a problem. How big is that problem? Is this problem only in Dahan or is this also in Riyadh and Jeddah, et cetera? Right, so you find out, you really want to understand the magnitude of this problem. And hopefully you have, you know, you have the resources to, to go ahead and do that and address that. So the four areas, right, your idea, the product that you're building, the team and execution. This is what, you know, this is what is the, you could say, the most important factors for your startups to be successful. In terms of, you know, um, you know the idea comes first. Um, and one of the exciting things about startups is that it's a very level playing field. Even if you don't have experience, it doesn't matter. In fact, young and not experienced is I would say it's good because you will figure things out. You will do things. And because you don't have the experience, you will do it for the first time to see if you make it work. So it's, it's, you know, it's like, it's like a, it's like a baby or a child. Right? They don't know that you cannot touch this and that because they haven't been 
told before or experienced before. Uh, so being an unknown and, ex and inexperienced is a huge asset. Uh, so while you're a student or afterwards, etc., best time, best time to do this. Idea comes first. And the company that you're working should feel like a very important mission. You get those people out working with you that can't see anything else, but I need to make this work. Right? So it's, it does consume your life. So I've been doing this for, you know, for 20 plus years. And I know people talk about, it. you got to balance this, you got to balance that. I, I personally, I don't see there's a balance. It's just that it just consumes you. It, you know, you're doing this on Eid day because on Eid day, you want to make sure all your promotional emails go out. So, you know, it just, it needs your attention. So, uh, I, at least I have not figured out that perfect balance. It just, it does encompass, you know, it does engross you. And inshallah, you have, you know, you have a good support system, family and friends that help you along. So it becomes something very, very interesting. So your startup idea, so it, it may seem like a bad idea. At the same time, you believe it's a good idea. Right? So your startup falls in that middle area. So think of Airbnb, classic example. I mean, you can't get more crazy than having someone, a stranger come and stay at your place. That just sounds just ridiculously just crazy. But it's a, you know, or at least it was a multi-billion dollar economy just for, you know, just for that sharing economy. So um, also if you, if you believe in it and you know that this is gonna work, you know, the good thing is, you, know, you probably will not have as much competition uh, you know, as uh, somebody else that think like you, for example. Why now? Or why is this the best time? You should always be able to address that issue. These are all questions that you should always have the answer for. So you're fully confident that this is something you want to do. Uh, you know, and the secret is to get started, get ahead. Right? There's no such thing as perfection. Right? In startup. The, one of the best things you can measure a startup is by how fast you move, right? How fast you move. And that way it builds momentum in the company. Every month you have a new release coming up. So what happens, even if your team is five people or three people, there's excitement, there's excitement, there's momentum building. And this is very, very important for a startup. This is what will fuel your team, right? That excitement of building and, you know, and that it's really, really matters. You're bu building your product. So product management, and I think, and I know, not just think, um, you are at one of the best places in the country, if not the world, to build products. I have seen some, you know, I've seen KPPM uh, student developers, some of the smartest in the industry. You know, some of you may have heard me about, talk about Foodix. Foodix is a, is a classic example of a KPPM made product. And this now is a multinational company, mashallah, they're doing really, really well. And with the Musab, they started this at you know, 22. So mashallah, it's a, and you probably have seen Foodix in many places. If you have to go to a coffee shop or restaurant, you see their, their products, mashallah, fantastic made at KPPM. Right? So that's what I'm saying. You have access to some of the smartest minds and building teams. So. And there's quite a few examples there. So, so building your product. So this is a picture of Mark Andreessen. Mark Andreessen is the, the gentleman that developed the browser. So he has a uh, Mark and, and Andreessen Horowitz is a, is a VC firm based out based of Silicon Valley. So the only thing that matters is getting product market fit to make sure your product has a market for it. This is very, very crucial. Really, really crucial. It's the only thing that matters. After that, everything else becomes easier if you can do this part right. And the only way to get this part right is to make sure there's a market for your part. And just test it, test it with family, test it with friends, make sure customers are there, etc. Right. So in your product, a great idea, you build a great product, you build a great company. So this is just something to, you know, uh, build something users love. This is such a popular uh, startup phrase and it's so important because you build something users love you charge whatever, they'll, they'll happily pay for it. As long as you're being reasonable, obviously. And here I'd love to talk about, for example, the, you know, 
the software as a service model where you're paying on a monthly basis an amount right, to use that product. So it may be it may be a service that you're having for maybe an email service, it may be a project management service, Canva, a classic example for developing just images, presentations, right? But you, basically it allows anybody to be a, to be a designer. And the thing is you charge individuals, you, know, you may charge a business a different price, you may charge students a different price, but you just, you just charge different people. But if you can price it well, and you have a global market, you end up doing very, very well because price it well, maybe paying like 20 reals per month. 20 reals per month, you spend that much maybe on a coffee uh, when you go with your friend. But if, if you can pay that per month, and you don't think about it twice, in the software, as the SaaS model, it's really, really spectacular in terms of what you could do. Fail early, fail fast, fail often. These are very popular buzzwords in the startup area because that way, if something's going wrong, you can pivot into something else. Right? And fail early, fail fast. That way, you don't waste too much resources on this. Just move on. And great products win. Uh, building things that people want is, is fantastic. And you know, to a certain point, be, you know, um, be fanatical about it. Right? You always are going to talk about this. You should be the biggest fan for your product. Right? Always talking about it, always be, um, you know, be promoting it. And the way you do that, you get feedback from users. You decide on should we fix this or not? Because every user will have a comment. You don't have to fix up every single comment. You decide on what way to do it, and then you fix on, and you move forward on that. This is a very, very important part. And this is probably something that gets left out a lot, which is you have metrics that measure how your company's doing. Right? So if you have a way of measuring how you're doing, then you can actually assess how your business is doing. So if you don't do that, you, you, know, you may be uh, inviting some trouble there to make sure that you get, uh, you get the whole team ready and working on this to make sure that everybody knows, guys, here, this, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at the total number of people downloading our product. But downloading may be fine, but what if they don't use it again? And so downloading is fine, but they should be engaging. So they should download it. And 100% of people should register it and at least spend the first two or three minutes after installed, that would be a very nice metric to have because it shows that all your teams are doing a good job. The marketing team is getting the message out there. People are downloading it. They're doing the user engagement, the actual building of registration. All of that is working fine. It's a good sign. There'd be a problem if you're spent, you know, if only three or four percent of people are actually downloading and successfully finishing a registration. There's a problem there because you know, there's, some, there's a massive uh, mismatch there. So you need to be careful about it. So having these metrics to, to measure what you're doing, uh, you know, monthly active users, right? Revenue, classic, classic metric for growth. Good to have that. But you need to decide what is that and help you and share that with the team. Everybody should know about this one. The team, probably this is my best part of what it talks to people, especially when it's at KVPN. So, like I said, you have access to the best people in the country for sure. Don't take my word for it. Talk to people outside, and I talk to companies all the time. Right? And they tell me, oh, by the way, we're looking for so-so kind of, you know, student, you have somebody in mind, uh, fly a deal, the airline, they're looking for an e-commerce person, someone that can understand Magento and open call. So, and they know what they get from KVP. So Alhamdulillah, right? It's the best place to build a team. And the team that you're building, right? You give them a guideline. You give them basically what you're building, right? Let everybody know we're building the most user-friendly company. And what, we, what matters is the following thing. And everybody works on building that kind of a company. Everybody works on building and working towards what the goal is. But everybody should know about it and should be building uh, accordingly. 
couple of things in, you know, in building, you know, uh, you try not to hire, you know, especially not quickly. You try to basically have someone that knows someone, you know, uh, join, right? So you hire very slowly because one thing that happens in a startup is because it's such a small team, you get the wrong person, it can destroy the whole company. It really can, or at least it can demoralize or have a big disadvantage of the company. So you hire very, very slowly. And if you have the wrong person, just, you know, you fire fast. Because you don't want that kind of, uh, you know, bad energy to go to other people. Hire the best people, right? Uh, you know, average people cannot make a great company. It's a very interesting way of looking at it. So hire the best people. And I can tell you, uh, from many years of experience, you have access to the best people here. Alhamdulillah. So it's a great time to build teams, right? And you know the teams. You're already participating in all your groups, activities, and such. And at that time, just you know, just build uh, those relationships that you can leverage from, right? And that way you can build a team. And you know, what kind of team are they? Are they smart? Do they get things done? You don't have to hire experts. Stay away from experts, right? Because they may not not do a lot of work because they are experts, right? So be careful with that. But just hire smart people that get things done. And also you want to think about, you know, are they interesting people for others to also spend time around? You may be a fantastic resource, but no one wants to hang out with you. That's a problem. Right? Because then you know, so look at those things. Because remember what you you're building something that is the wow. So you need to have wow people. You need to have people that are super hardworking. People that are, you know, good communicators. Because as you know, as you know, as well as I do, just we do so much communication today. Everything's on you know, WhatsApp, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So if somebody is always taking a lot of, you know, like a paragraph, every time they write something, it's two or three pages, no one's gonna listen to them. No one's gonna read them because that's terrible communications. In the sense that you know, you should be able to effective communicate. I'm not saying they're terrible, but be very, very good in communications. Be determined, right? So there's nothing that's going to stop you from doing this. Um, you know, and would you feel comfortable reporting to them? One stage. So this is just you know, some of the stuff that Mark Zuckerberg is is using you know, when they hire people, right? And once you have your team, everybody has a job. It doesn't matter where they work from. As long as everybody knows their roles, as long as everybody has due dates and deadlines and you have to follow those, it's, it's a very, very good environment to have like that. Um, so, so it all matters is how you execute. Right? It's execute, execute, execute. You have a plan, but your execution has to be right on. One of my favorite quotes from Mike Tyson, the box of Mike Tyson, Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. That's, this is what matters. In the sense that you, know, you have a plan, great, but you have to stick to it. Right? Stick to it. So because things go bad in a startup, everything will go bad. It just it's just part of life. Right? Things go bad, uh, things break, and you can't be worried about that. It's part of life. What matters is you know how you respond. Right? Hence my hence this uh, quote. So as a startup founder, right, the startup CEO, so the CEO's job, you're going to set up your company, you're going to set up your team, and they're the ones that are building. Right? You have to make sure the company has money next month and the month after. That's your job, right? to make sure you have to execute a team, but you have to make sure that they are provided for. You have to make sure that they are excited. Uh, you set the vision, let make sure everybody's clear on that vision. Um, and let them, you know, let them, let them work with that. Evangelize, talk to people, always mention, you know, what you're building. Because if you're building the best company in the world, people should know about it. And if you're not building the best company in the world, why are you building just an average company? So these are things to think about. So you'll definitely be involved with hiring and managing. You want to make sure you get the best people. And I can tell you, like I said, uh, you are the best place for putting all these things together. Uh, and making sure that everybody executes. That's your job to do. Make sure that the that deadline, deadlines are being met and that people are working 
But that's what you're gonna have to do. And you wanna have this, you know, get things done attitude. Do whatever it takes. You know, I'll, you want that team that just says, you know, I, I got this, I'll take care of this. That's the kind of team you want, you want to have. Be, and you only have that if you have set up that vision, right? You wanna build a, you wanna build the next career, or you wanna build a fantastic team. So quick moving, you know, uh, fast decision making, you never give up, right? Be courageous, be risk takers, uh, you know, work hard, play hard. That kind of attitude is very hard to compete in the company that can, that can basically have that. Always keep momentum, always, always keep momentum, always keep growing. You know, your, your, your team, your product, always have that as a plan because once you stop that, you know, competition may be getting the attention. Or your people, I, I have this, this issue with you know, a couple of companies that I advise, their top people end up leaving. And I'm tell, I tell the CEO, by the way, you have a major problem that you don't think you have, but you have a problem. Because people keep leaving the company and he spends a lot of time in hiring them, training them, and then they leave. And I said, brother, you have major problems to address. So again, not the company culture plays a big role. Who do you have working for the company plays a big role. All these things, uh, you know, uh, matter a lot. So always keep growing, always keep building product um, in terms of uh, growing your company, right? And this is your job as a, as a CEO, as a, as a manager, to basically always keep things going. Um, you know, always keep growing. Sales fixes a lot of things. Sales does fix everything. It says that if there's money coming in, it can take care of salaries. It can take care of issues that you may have. So always having sales is very, very important. To make sure, and that's where your chief revenue officer comes in. And so, getting people that are, um, I wouldn't say worried about experience, don't worry about experience uh, because you may not have the experience, which is completely fine. Right? For startups, they're, they're very level playing field, not everybody will have experience. But as long as you're executing fast and you have a good team that is willing to work hard, because it's, it's very, very challenging, it sounds great. But it's, it's the hardest thing that you'll do because your friends now will be getting jobs here and there. They're telling you, by the way, oh, I got this job and my child's product, it's all good. And you're like, you know, I just want to figure this out. So it, it becomes very, very challenging at times. So it's not easy, but it's the best thing in the world also because you're doing your own thing. You build your own company. There is there's challenges with being your own boss, but it's, it's, it's either you or not. So it's either you can have it or not. So, so wish everybody the very best. Um, another favorite quote of mine is, you know, by Steve Martin, a comedian, you know, be so good that they can't ignore you. So be focused on what you're building. You have to know who your competition is, but don't, don't obsess over the competition. Let them build whatever. You know what you're building. You know the company that you have. And as long as, as, long as they're not from KPPM, I think you have a very, very high chance uh, because I, I know that you have access to some of the best teams to build, inshallah. So I wish everyone the very, very best in what you build. It's a very exciting time. May Allah SWT make things easy for you and give you success that is good for you. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please, uh, please, please share with me. Or you, you, know, you know me on MS Teams and such, so please message me any, anytime. And uh, yeah, I will stop my presentation. So hopefully it's been something that has been interesting to you. And if you have any questions, you know, now or later, anytime, just please be in touch uh, because it is a uh, very, very interesting market right now. Thank you very I much. I see a lot of startups uh, around the world. We my, really my, appreciate my it. My pleasure. Uh, we now have uh, Abdullah Bakawi. He has a question. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mustafa, My for the presentation and sessions. Actually, it is very helpful, and I really enjoy it. So, <clears throat> I have quick questions here, Doctor. So, uh, they said, I mean, you know, the situations right now with COVID and things have changed. So, I, I have, I have heard something. I mean, one of the biggest lesson for every startups or companies in, around the world. Um, that is uh, saying every company must become a digital and embrace the digital transformation. 
what do you think about this and is this true i mean when we think about any new startup projects or any kind of investments in our life sure sure are are we going to consider this digital transformation how 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 you how how you what do you think about this doctor sure sure very good question abdullah uh, i think you know it's in terms of in terms of the market in terms of what we have it is definitely i mean digital definitely has a role to play definitely has a role to play it may not be the answer to everything however if you understand the digital technologies now i'm example what artificial intelligence and machine learning and data analytics if you have that knowledge i would say definitely you can make any business work better because what you're doing you're actually letting that owner or that business person know that here's what your customers are thinking here's what the customers are you know are able to you have that analysis from them so by you able to you know uh, going ahead and providing insights it'll be something very very helpful to the owner of that business so digital can be a very very major catalyst in that company providing more innovation and maybe even doing some digital marketing so that they are able to tap into new markets you know so to answer the question does every i think every business can benefit from it but before they get into it you know they have to go through and understand what is you know what is the problem that they look to solve right so take a look at you know take a look at just this last you know this 2020 with the pandemic right you look at pretty much every industry such as education such as retail such as medical and you know everybody has a digital strategy that if they didn't have that take a look at zoom and all these technologies alhamdulillah rabbil alamin if we even had this 20 years ago we had blackboard my first semester of teaching in 2000 uh, so when when we went online last semester in one week we were just you know we just continued class like no difference so i would say that you know it does i think digital has a role to play and another thing, another reason of the light should you may want to consider digital because the market for digital is so big and the providers are there. There are plenty of providers, but less than the traditional businesses. So if you're looking to start something, yes, you could start a restaurant or a coffee shop. There's, there's a big demand, big appetite. However, there are, you know, just there are plenty of other startups that are doing that. You know, so so a digital is just a it's a piece of low hanging fruit where you literally need fairly low capital and you could build something that has a global reach so there are some some advantages there so to answer that question i would say that, yeah digital has a major role to play for many industries in south arabia the opportunities are much much higher and bigger than for example other countries that have maybe 10 more years of digital than Saudi Arabia, for example, right? Because other countries, they were online in 1990. Saudi Arabia was online in 2000. So, you know, but even now we have 20 years of experience. So, you know, so there are a lot of, lot of opportunities in digital right now. Thank you so much, Mr. You're welcome, you're welcome. Right, do we have other questions? No one? <laughs> I think they are still thinking about the question. Uh, yes, until someone asks a question, uh, you mentioned for the business canvas that uh, or overall you need to have sales uh, for your business that fixes all of your problems or most of your problems. Uh, yes. But let's say, uh, how can I know if my sales are good? Or uh, yani, Let's say I have sales. But how can I know if it's the right sales that I should have or not? I would say, I would say that, you know, uh, in terms of when it comes to sales, when it comes to, as long as you know your target market, as long as you know your customer base, and you have a way of them giving you their money, 
you know, of course, you know, times go through challenging times when you're not able to, you know, because people are, you know, people are, people are minds are stressed out and such. But um, as long as, again, it comes back to the same thing, as long as you, are, you have addressed their problem, as long as you have uh, fixed an issue that they have, they'll pay you, they'll pay you, you know, they'll not worry about if you charge whatever they charge because you're providing them a service. So as long as that service is valuable uh, and you have to price it well so that you know, people don't think about it twice. And I think there is definitely very, very high potential. But yeah, all sales are good. You know. Okay, nice. Bye. Uh, guys, do you have any questions? I think we have the... Uh, Dr. Murad was here, but he left. Uh, Dr. Murad Mansour. Okay, okay. But he left. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, Bye, I think there is no any uh, other questions. Uh, mashallah, the presentation was very clear and uh, I hope that it's very interesting. Official. Hopefully, it's going to be a beginning for a new startup uh, with someone. Hopefully. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. inshallah. Look forward to it, inshallah. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for coming to this yani, amazing webinar. I would not say it's a webinar, it's more into a discussion and yani, it's a discussion, taking, yes. Yeah, taking uh, advices from a great person, to be honest, really. Uh, exactly. He's one of exactly. the best, yani, instructors in KCPM uh, of all time. Yani, even people who, don't, who, wants to, who wants to ask them about yani, self development or uh, yani, he wants to start something, they will always yani, consider Dr. Mustafa as one of the main people they will go to. It's a blessing. Alhamdulillah. Yani. And hopefully, yani, this becomes more into all of our yani, uh, professors and doctors. Uh, they get more into uh, entrepreneurship or the idea of how to develop something uh, new from scratch. It's about mainly the mindset. Uh, I think it's we, the mindset. Yeah, KPPM at the past, maybe now it's changing. Uh, it was built how to be an employee, not how to be an entrepreneur. Yes. Exactly. exactly. Hopefully sure. we can change sure. that together, inshallah. Inshallah khair, I hope so, definitely. We should very, I wish everybody the very best and they'll make, make things easy for you and makes your challenges much, much more easier, inshallah. Thank you very much, Dr. Mustafa, and hopefully we my can pleasure, see you. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure, inshallah. Take care. Take care. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Awesome.